Good afternoon, everyone. This is Crystal Stone from the Katie Brown Educational Program. And uh, today I'm going to talk about something that I read recently, although it's a couple of years old, that uh, really resonated with me and hopefully resonates with all of you. Um, so there's this really cool three-part series on medium.com um, titled, You Are the Media You Eat, right? And so um, kind of a play on the you are what you eat, right? And the entire series is based off of having a balanced media diet, right? So um, in the food period, I'm sorry, the food pyramid, um, we talk about, you know, making sure you're eating healthier things and consuming junk food sparingly. And this article, or three-part series, I should say, uh, makes the same comparison. So um, at the bottom of the food pyramid, the base of the, I'm sorry, media pyramid, I should say, uh, there are, you know, local news channels and things that are based in fact without opinion. Um, and that should be the most of our media consumption. And that's the healthiest for us to be consuming. And as you move up the pyramid, you look at things like maybe articles that are scrolling on social media or maybe things that are meant to uh, entertain but not into but not offend and things like that. And as you get a little higher, you're looking at memes that may be based in fact, but may not be based in fact and kind of social media scrolling and reading what other people post on social media, which may be true, but may not be true. And then finally at the top is, you know, propaganda and things that are uh, meant to satisfy our own biases and things that are based completely in falsehood. And I won't even give examples of things like that because I don't want to spread that myself. But um, anyway, the three-part series had some really, really interesting data that talked about how 10% um, of Americans who consume the media say they do it, obsessively so, or how the news makes adults feel more anxious after consuming it. And for me, I'm someone who who watches the news, who reads the news. I am obsessed with the news. I love the news. Um, in fact, quick anecdote, anecdote um, my son and I were talking about kind of emergency planning and, you know, what would you do if there were a fire in the house and where the exits are and what counts as an emergency and just different things like that. And at one point, I had asked him to give me some examples of an emergency. And he said to me, well, a really good example of an emergency is if you can't watch the news. That would definitely be an emergency for you, mom. So just to give you an idea of where I am, I'm obsessed. I feel... Um, like it gives me just the knowledge gives me some sense of control of my environment and the world and helps me better prepare for my day, whether it's weather and traffic or um, more serious topics or knowing who's where or does what I live and breathe the news. Um, but, but when you're watching the local news, right, it's based in fact, but how does it make you feel and this article talks a lot about that too you know and when you're on social media and you're scrolling and you don't necessarily have control over the content you're seeing um how does that make you feel right if you see something that you don't like and you're about to go to bed how does that play into your ability to fall asleep um just there were a lot of really really good interesting comparisons and facts. And so for today, I'm going to um, post the photo. I got permission to post the photo of the food pyramid with this video. So I'll do that on our Facebook and Twitter accounts. And then I'll also um, include the link to the three-part series. And I would encourage you guys to read it. Um, each is about a five to seven minute read. Um, so read through the series. Think about where you're getting your news from. And more importantly, how is it making you feel after, right? Do you feel like it's validating your own biases and agendas without necessarily um, including facts or facts sprinkled there? Or um, is it sort of the groundwork or the framework for that news article or story? Um, are you constantly scrolling? Are you passing by things that get you fired up right before bedtime? Um, 
what energy are you bringing when you consume news and what are you leaving with when you're done consuming the news? And that's really, really important. I think now, especially with, with everything that's happening with the coronavirus, um, you know, in Massachusetts, we just found out that schools will be closed for the rest of the year. And there's certainly some big feelings about that and some correct information and some incorrect information that I've already seen about that. So just really challenging yourself this week to th think about what you're viewing, think about how frequently you're viewing it, and thinking about how it does or does not serve you and how you perceive the world and kind of your energies and spaces, right? Does it make you happy or sad or feel anxious and nervous and worried or, um, yeah. So anyway, I will put the link to the article at the bottom. I will post the really, really awesome food diet or food pyramid, I should say, um, with the article. And for this week, I challenge everyone to, um, even if you take a day, just jot down what you saw, what you read, what caught your eye. And then the next day, just take a minute to think about where that fell in that food pyramid. Was it at the base? Was it in the middle? Was it red? And then what made you feel a certain way? And just kind of adjusting from there. Um, that's all I have for this week. Read the article. It's really great. Um, other than that, be well, stay safe. Thank you. Bye.